We're very busy this morning at the house. The doorbell is going absolutely mental. Uh, but good morning, everyone. Today's Monday and I have spent the last couple of weeks kind of on holiday because two weeks ago, Lydia and I went to The Grove and we had a little spa break. Uh, Lydia actually vlogged that, so if you wanna go and check out that video, I'll leave a link down to that video in the description box below. But don't go anywhere yet. Last week, I headed down to Dorset with some friends to a place called Lyme Regis. Uh, for any of you that don't know what Lyme Regis is or where Lyme Regis is, uh, it's in Dorset, it's part of the Jurassic Coast, which is a World Heritage Site. And it's situated very close to Devon. It's kind of like on the border of Dorset and Devon. Um, and it looks a little something like this. see a lovely little coastal town um, it was very quiet not the kind of place that you'd go with a group of friends It'd probably be something that you would typically get small families to go and visit uh, but it was very nice very pleasant we actually did a lot of activity I managed to get around a golf in swimming in the sea. We climbed to the Golden Cap. The Golden Cap is the highest southerly point, something like that. So we climbed up there, I think it's something like 191 meters high. Uh, so we hiked up there and I think I did around about 20 kilometers per day. The drinking wasn't too heavy, so it wasn't your typical lads holiday, as it were. We were kind of just like trying to be super sensible, keep it very active, very outdoors, and uh, we did that. And we actually got quite lucky with the weather because it was only rainy on one day, and that, of course, would be the day that I went into the sea. <laughs> but here's a little highlights reel of some of the views from the Golden Cap. So yeah, following on from that trip, I arrived back on Friday last week. I actually went out for a round of golf, at a local golf club to me uh, called Woburn. It's one of the UK's best golf clubs, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, it's stunning, absolutely beautiful, situated in a woodland, and it's just very, very well kept. So um, I was lucky enough to go with some friends and get a round of golf on there. Played absolutely terrible, but it's the taking part that counts. But we're back to it today. So over the weekend, I took on a little task of decorating the new shelves that Andy put in for us a week or so ago. I also wired up the lights that are the under, under unit lights uh, in that area as well. So I'm gonna go down there this morning and cork that up and then probably give it a sort of light sand back ready for another couple of coats just to finish off those shelves. But they're coming along very nicely. So we're gonna get cracking on with that. And then the main event over the week that I was away, my beehive arrived. And so we're gonna get busy assembling that today. And uh, from all accounts, it looks like it's gonna be quite a big task. So uh, I'm sure it's gonna consume the majority of my day, but I'm looking forward to it. Very excited to get started on it and uh, start to kind of like learn and understand what the hive does, the components of the hive, um, because this isn't your typical traditional hive. So 
So this new little white line you can see running along the edge of the shelf, that's the cork. That obviously isn't going to be white, we're going to decorate over the top of that, we just need to let it dry off. Uh, but what it does is it creates a nice seal between the wall and the unit, um, so it creates a more seamless finish. Uh, cork is paintable, unlike sealant that you can see here. Sealant's got a more shiny finish, uh, normally used around kitchens and bathrooms, this is like a waterproof uh, sealant and cork something that would be used more in a decorative stance. Normally the people that are installing this stuff are absolutely rapid and uh, very neat and tidy. There's little tips and tricks you can do with the nozzle, cutting it at a 45 degree angle. I've also seen guys hammer it flat. So there's lots of different techniques, but the key thing to remember when applying cork is to use a wet finger to smooth it through. You'll find that you don't get it building up on your fingers and uh, getting really sticky and messy. Uh, for one and two, you'll also find that it helps spread the cork really efficiently. This morning's little task complete, very happy with that. So what we'll do now is we'll allow the cork to dry and then, like I said to you, I'm going to give a nice soft sand uh, over the shelves and then I'll give them two more coats and that will have those finished completed to sit inside with the existing kitchen. Up here! <laughs> Bolly! Hello. Look. He, he hasn't seen me. You can't see him, can you? Oh, funny me. Hello. Yeah, he's seen me now. Oh, you're all excited. He's done another wee wee. Carrie? Outside? Yeah, he's done another one there. So I've just been talking about these sneakers over on my Instagram and I thought, oh, I'd quickly share it on YouTube as well because Instagram stories obviously run out within 24 hours. So it's a little bit more permanent. I haven't managed to find these online to link them on the gram, but maybe by the time this video goes up, there may be. But these are Jack Jones's new Eco Trainer. They're made from 70% recycled old rubber shoes in the sole. The insert is made from cork, which is 100% sustainable. And then this is Eco Leather, which means that it's had uh, no animals used. It's made from a mixture of materials to create a leather feel. A step in the right direction, I'd say. Very good to see that uh, these sort of products are coming through. And it has a great weight to it. It feels very sturdy very durable so we'll have to see how they last but so far very impressed so it's currently about 5 p.m the day has just slipped away from me but i'm just about to start building the beehive and over the course of the last couple of weeks i've learned so much yet i know so little and that's the way of learning right there's always lots to learn when you're starting out doing something new and I am at the very beginning of that journey. So I'm gonna be learning lots of new terminology that I'm probably gonna get mixed up and confused throughout my learnings. But this journey I'm going on with the bees, I'm very much gonna be sharing online, which means that no doubt I'm gonna make some mistakes. I'm gonna say some things that are incorrect. I'll try my best to edit those out or to correct those further down the line if I do get those wrong. But please bear with me, this is a learning journey. Everybody has to start somewhere and I'm very excited to get started on this. Behind me, you'll see on the floor, just there, three boxes. It's from a company called Honeyflow. They basically have a patent on a system that means that you can extract honey without interrupting the hive. That doesn't mean that you do not have to do your health checks. You do not have to look after your hive as you would traditionally, you absolutely do. And you still need to understand and know everything about beekeeping as you would within the traditional sense. So basically what I'm gonna be doing today is building the flow hive, understanding the components, getting used to what the hive looks like, how it works, um, learning the terminology of each piece because from my understanding what you would have traditionally in a beehive is a brood box and then on top of that brood box you have a super and the brood box is obviously where the queen lays her eggs and then above that is the super and that is where the bees store their honey and that is also where we'll be extracting our honey as well further down the line 
only if there is enough honey to extract. The main purpose of having a beehive isn't just to extract honey. There are lots of benefits that I'll go into more detail further down the line along my journey, certainly when I know more as well, um, because like I said, there's such a vast amount of information that I need to acquire. Um, but to kick things off, I'm just simply gonna be building a hive. I'm gonna be signing up for some educational courses. I'm also gonna be in touch with the local beekeeper and the local bee society uh, or bee club. And um, obviously, until I'm in a position where I'm able to confidently have bees, I will then do so. But for now, it's just about getting the hive set up, understanding the basics of beekeeping, and uh, probably getting some help along the way uh, from some local guys. And uh, Andy, who you guys would have seen on my channel recently, he's already said to me he's more than happy to come and help out. So I'm not gonna be on this journey on my own. I'm very fortunate to have some people around me that are gonna be helping and making sure that I'm on the right track. But I'm very excited to get started on this. It's the start of a new journey. And um, yeah, it's quite overwhelming learning all of these new terminologies like propolis and uh, brood boxes and all of these different words and what they mean and why you do things and just little things. Like I didn't realize that when a hive is either unhappy or has outgrown their home, they will prepare to swarm. And when they swarm, they actually put these little caps or cups, I think they're called queen cups, on the edges of the hive. And the queen will actually reduce in size because she's getting ready to swarm. And they will start to um, re-queen, as far as I understand it, in these cups. And um, basically, during your inspection, depending on what you want to do and what's best for the hive, you have to make decisions as to whether to kill the cups off or keep them. Um, it's just... I guess there's so much to learn that I didn't know existed in this world, but I'm all up for it and I've got years to do it, so there's no rush. As long as it's done correctly and properly, um, I'm a happy man. So over here, you'll see that there's a beekeeping safety brochure or booklet. This is something that I actually probably should have done before I started investing in beekeeping. I think I've been stung by a bee before, but I'm not sure if it's a wasp. So if it was a bee, then I'm not allergic. If it wasn't, I don't know if wasp and bee stings are the same, but let's just hope I'm not allergic to bees because that would be absolutely terrible. And I'd have to um, either sell the beehive or pay the local beekeeper to keep bees here. But anyway, I need to do a health and safety course on what to do in case myself or somebody that's with me gets stung. So that's something I need to do. I also need to go through the assembly booklet and work out what it is that I need to do to put this all together. Now, when you first start your hive, all of these components that you can see here that complete your uh, beehive, these actually won't all go down at the start. The only thing that will go down will be the brood box and you'll wait for your colony to get established. And until that's thriving, you won't add your super. Now they call theirs the flow super because obviously this has the technology where they turn a key and the honey flows out. But essentially this is the storage unit for the bees. And what happens is they put a tray above the brood box and it stops the queen from going up into the super which is where the honey stored and putting eggs and uh, fertilizing that so that stays happening down in here and you'll see that these brood frames that you can just see sit to the right of this box this is the traditional way that bees actually create combs so they will create a comb by hanging it off of this top lip here i'm sure there's a name for that that i'll learn eventually and um yeah that will all stay untouched um, and that's the traditional beehive system where the queen will live and this is the box where we'll be doing our health checks to make sure there isn't any infection um, and other little insects and stuff aren't causing havoc in there so yeah it's going to be um it's going to be quite a mission to build this and i've just found out that i need some non-toxic glue to glue like the roof and stuff together uh, it doesn't come with the kit so i've ordered that on amazon it's not arriving until thursday so what we're going to do we're going to start putting everything together and then when the glue arrives i'll then dismantle the bits that need gluing and glue it <laughs> so it's a little bit backwards but i want to get started on it because i want to take my time they say that it can take a couple of hours to put this together i'm going to take my time I think it's going to take a lot longer because I want to make sure that everything is assembled correctly. And then after all of the components are put together, they suggest painting it at that stage, not prior uh, to actually do it after it's been built together. But that will give it a final sealant and make sure that everything is weatherproofed and uh, obviously 
increase the longevity of the hive. Now, I'm probably gonna try and keep a natural wood look, so I'm gonna get Ken to bring me some suitable products to uh, make sure that we give the weatherproof sealant without losing the wood effect. The hive that I've gone for is a cedar wood. It comes in three different types of wood. Uh, cedar wood was the most durable, so I decided to go with that because I obviously want it to last for as long as possible. I also opted in for the additional leg kit that you can see at the bottom, which just helps it stand off the ground. I'm gonna be working with Andy in the woodlands to make sure that the hive is positioned suitably. It's facing in the right direction. It's also lifted off the ground enough to ensure that we don't get ants and stuff that come up into the hive. Probably gonna to look to put something on the ground, maybe some bark or um, I don't know yet. We're gonna do something to make sure that it's basically in prime position. So we're gonna get busy putting this together now and uh, we'll see how we get on. This right here is a smoker and this is used to put smoke into and around the hive to try and calm the hive down when you're having to do an inspection. So what happens is when the beehive is opened, the queen lets off pheromones and tells all of the bees that basically there's an intruder and they obviously all start to attack. So what this does is it actually blows cold smoke into the hive um, and I don't know it to the full extent how it works. Um, I think it also lets the hive know that there's a fire near because obviously you're putting smoke into the hive. So what they do is they go in, they start eating and collecting honey um, in the hive and it calms them down. I'm gonna learn a lot more about the smoker. I watched quite a few YouTube videos yesterday about how to fuel your smoker, the best fuel to use, it's stuff like that. It seems like pine needles is quite a good choice. I'm obviously not a beekeeper, so I'm not gonna be looking after like six plus hives, so I'm not gonna have to worry too long about the longevity of the fuel burning. But I think from what I understand it, some of the most fundamental points is to ensure that the fuel you're using is safe for the bees. So natural fuel, like I just said, and also to make sure that the smoke that's blowing out is cold. You don't wanna heat up this smoker too much uh, and be pumping in hot smoke onto the bees because they don't like it. So you wanna make sure that it's cold smoke that's coming out. That is the smoker, which is essentially used to keep the bees calm. Now, next up, I'd actually forgot that this was here. These are all of our bee suits and veils. So this is all of the safety equipment stuff. Um, obviously, I don't expect that I'm gonna be the only person that goes out there. I think Lydia's gonna to wanna to come and join and I'm sure I'm gonna have friends and family as well. They're gonna to wanna to come out and uh, see the beehive. So protective equipment is essential, not for experienced beekeepers that are very comfortable and confident and know their colonies. For somebody like me that's a beginner, it's really important that I put on my safety equipment and then perhaps in the future years, I can start to sort of like reduce the amount of safety wear I uh, put on. I think it's always advised you do, but if you were to watch some of the more experienced beekeepers, you'll see that they don't wear any gloves. Some of them will literally just wear a veil. I even watched a video the other day and all the guy had on was a cap um, and he had thousands of bees flying around him and he was completely calm and comfortable. And as far as I saw in the 15 minute video, he didn't get stung once. Uh, but of course, I'm just starting out, so I'm gonna be using all of the safety equipment, head to toe, I'm <laughs> taking no chances. Just because you've got safety equipment does not mean you will not get stung. It's just a prevention. Um, obviously when you're moving around and the veil touches your skin, the bees can sting through uh, the mesh and still get you. So it's not completely bulletproof. It just makes things a little bit safer and reduces the chances of you being stung. So I can't actually remember what I ordered, but we take a quick look. So it looks like they come in a little handy bag, which is great for storage. Um, this is a size extra small, so this is Lydia's one. And they do a mesh suit, which is great for ventilation. So if you're living in places like Australia and America, where it's super hot, um, it's gonna be really, really handy. But I picked up these because we're in the UK, it's often quite cold. This is like a traditional bee suit. It comes with a set of gloves. Comes with a hive tool. This is like a multi-purpose tool, which is used to open up the hives. Um, you can scrape away and stuff with this. Just a little bit of handy kit that apparently um, 
you just use it for everything in beekeeping and the suit itself so we quickly open up this one we take a look so you'll see we've got the hood that pops out like this Something else I worked out the other day is beekeepers that do wear suits will have a cap on. And the reason why is because the cap, as it protrudes out the front of the head, will stick to the front of the mesh here, which keeps it sticking out in front of the face. So like I was saying earlier, when the veil sometimes touches your skin, the bees can actually get their stinger through here. Now, if you're wearing a cap, it's gonna make sure that it stays off of your face a lot more. So stick a cap on, it'll poke into here, and then they won't be able to sting through. This actually looked pretty sturdy. This isn't as loose as the veil that I'm talking about, so you may not need to wear it in this, but anyway. It looked pretty big. They do suggest that you go a couple of sizes bigger, or at least a size bigger, because the baggier it is, the less likely, again, of getting stung because the fabric's not actually sitting tight onto your skin. So, yeah. Very cool. That looks like going on the moon. <laughs> so a second ago when I was talking to you about the mesh suit and we decided to go for the more traditional suit, I did get myself a traditional suit as well. But what I added into the basket as an extra was this jacket here. So this here is a breathable mesh jacket. So this isn't a suit. So further down the line, or if I've got some extra people coming over and we just want to put some extra protection on. If you're wearing a pair of jeans and some boots and socks, then I know darling. Then this jacket is a great little quick thing to chuck on. Maybe if you're not cracking open the hive and you don't think that you're gonna be disturbing the bees too much, but you're going for some harvesting, I can stick this on and it's gonna protect me from any bees that are just flying around the hive itself. Um, and I'm not having to put on all of my gear. So yeah, this is, um, this is my jacket. I might actually stick this on quickly. We'll see what it looks like on. Very elastic here around the, um, waistline which I guess it has to be right stop any of those little bees getting in so as you can see under there there's a zip there there's also a zip that side but I'm not gonna bother doing it and then there's a velcro strap just here you stick down there you have it this is the ventilated bee jacket very nice it's actually pretty comfortable fits quite nicely as well it's got a bit of movement in it a bit baggy on the sleeves like I said just prevents those stings also looks like there's a little bit of uh, elastic here, which is probably gonna come in handy to attach your gloves to if you need to take your gloves off. Your gloves to if you need to take your gloves off. It's like the gloves have got a little mesh section on them as well, probably to help your hand breathe. I think the reason why experienced beekeepers don't actually um, wear gloves is because they wanna be able to feel and move around and do what they've gotta do because I'm sure that wearing gloves isn't the most convenient. I'm not sure why we've got extra small gloves with these, but it is what it is. They do fit, they're a bit tight, but you don't want them to be big, do you, when you're uh, fiddling around with stuff, so. You wanna sniff? Onesie. Want to put it on? No, I'm okay. It's cool though, isn't it? Yeah. I'll say this is yours, this is mine. Oh. Yours is the XXS. Oh, right. Right, so I went online and used their size chart, and the size chart said that I was an extra small, and Lydia was an XXS from memory. Um, yeah, that's right. And uh, I had to literally measure myself, because I'm like, I've never been an extra small in anything in my life. Like bizarre but obviously in bee suits I was um, so yeah I just got the suggested size basically and they're right because it does fit so it's a good job they've got a size chart because otherwise I would have ordered myself a medium and I'd have been walking around like Michelin man okay so here's Lydia's XXS with her gloves so what I've done is I've brought two extra small bee suits and an XXS the reason why I did that was because when I've got people like Andy coming over to help me, I want to be able to supply them with some safety gear because I don't expect people to turn up in their bee gear. He may have it, he may not. I don't know whether his work supplied it to him when he was beekeeping. So essentially I've bought two, so when any friends come over um, or anybody 
that needs an extra suit, I've got one. Um, probably should have maybe brought a small, not an extra small, um, just in case some of my slightly taller friends <laughs> arrive and their ankles are showing, but fingers crossed um, it will be good enough for people to wear um, when they visit. Now we've finished unboxing all of the safety equipment, it's time to get cracking with the hive itself. Uh, so before we start losing the light, we're going to go into a little time lapse. Wish me luck, <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> quite the mission. There are lots of components all in one box that I need to work out. So apparently it's labelled very well, so we shall see. <laughs> Thought I'd quickly interrupt just to show you it all laid out on the floor. Uh, so it seems to be labelled pretty well. Uh, over here you can even see on the actual fixture and fittings boxes it even tells you what section uh, of the build it's for. So this is for the Flow Super and then these screws are for the brew box, basement screws, baseboard screws and hive roof screws. If you look at that little piece of wood there that's used to make sure that the roof's projectory across the front and the rear is correct so when you're screwing it down it aligns correctly quite a handy little bit of kit to have feet i didn't actually realize that they sit on a ball so you can actually move the feet around so if you've got uneven ground then these can obviously just uh, adjust accordingly which is super clever i didn't know that and uh, these are the brackets that screw into the side that's all looking good um here's the roof here this is what i need the glue for actually i need to glue the roof um, in place as far as I understand it. Uh, I did notice that there was a couple of little nicks on a few of the components So we've got some sandpaper. We'll try and make good of it. Uh, it looks like they got a little bit bashed around in the box Probably when it was being uh, delivered. You can see that it's taken out quite a nasty chunk, which isn't the greatest um, There's a few pieces with that on including the roof line got a couple of uh, scratches but again we could sand, sand that down and uh, stain that up so nothing to cry about and then over there at the back just here you can see there the brood frames and then behind it the inner cover and uh, I believe the hole you can use to control bee flow I need to read up a little bit more about that actually and then just to the side there those brackets that's the harvesting shelves uh, so you can put your jars on when you're harvesting if we flick up just at the back there this is the innovative part of the actual hive itself here you'll see the ready to go honeycombs uh, what the bees do is they actually wax these they'll then start filling them with honey and then when they're full they will cap them and the way in which this system works if I just hold that like that put your key into the top you twist it and then the honey flows out um, I've got seven frames so seven of these in total across uh, it was suggested that in colder environments more space in the actual hive itself will be better for the bees um, for their survival so we went ahead with that and that little tube at the back is the uh, harvesting tube that you stick just at the bottom here to help extract the honey
here we have it, the final product. It's probably taken me around about three hours so far to get to this stage. We're almost there. The only thing that I haven't been able to complete is the brood frames, and that's because they require uh, the non-toxic glue that I've had to order from Amazon. That arrives on Thursday, I think I mentioned earlier. So as soon as that arrives, I'll put those together. Uh, they're relatively straightforward to put together. You just literally pin four nails into each corner and you just have to glue a few of the components together. That will be situated in the brood box, which is at the bottom here. So I'll just quickly talk you through this hive. Like I said, uh, it's all very new to me as well. So these are some extras that you can add onto the hive. These are the feet. These just help obviously raise it off the ground. Just above here, you will see there is a vent. This vent can be spun around, so you can spin it this way and it'll allow ventilation and then the other way will close ventilation. And then just inside here, you'll see we have a tray. This tray, um, I believe, is used to sort of catch any insects and animals that try and get in there. Also, that will be full of like any crap that falls out from the bottom of the hive. I'm gonna to have to learn more about the function of this, why we use it, what we put in it, or what we don't put in it. But that is the tray that sits at the very bottom of the hive. And then just above, this is, like I just said, the brood box. This is where the queen's gonna be situated, and this is where all of the new bee eggs will be laid. And then you probably can't see very clearly, but there's a little black trim that you may be able to see that just runs above this. This is the queen excluder. Uh, this stops the queen from coming up into the super, uh, because this is, of course, where we'll be collecting our honey from. This is where Flow have their innovative design. So this is the Flow Super, and if I was to just move this handle to the side, pull this out, these brackets and the cover become a harvesting shelf and you can put your jars on here. You'll see this little tube right in front of me here. This actually goes into the bottom of the flow frame and that sits in there like this and the honey will pour out into the jar. Now, to start the flow, what you'll need to do is remove this cover here and then just inside you'll see the top of the frames there's a little cap that you pull out and you get this big long rod in it you stick the rod into the bottom 90 degree turn down that opens up the comb and allows the honey to flow down and flow out into the jar and then to close it you pull the rod out, you push the rod through the top compartment all the way to the back and again a 90 degree turn and that is now reset ready for the bees to start reloading up the comb with honey. So that's kind of like the basic fundamentals of the beehive. And there's a couple of other bits with this. We have some inspection windows on the side. This is actually the rear of the hive. On the other side is the entrance where the bees come and go. Uh, there's a ledge that you'll see when I take you around in a second. You'll also notice that the hive is actually tilted. The reason why it's tilted is to help with the flow of honey. Uh, so it's all leaning to the rear, slightly down on a three degree angle, I believe. Um, and this is allowing for the honey to basically flow out easier um, to make sure that the harvesting process is as quick as possible. Smoker, we spoke about that earlier. And then obviously on top we have the roof. I'll just grab you and take you around to the side. So this here is an inspection window. Move these clips here and pull that out. You'll be able to see through the inspection window the flow frames. They are prefabricated honeycombs that the bees, as I mentioned earlier, will coat, fill and cap. I need to double check this, but as I understand it, the bees will start in the middle of the frame and they'll work their way to the outside. So when you start seeing these end panels getting capped, there's a good chance that the rest of the frames will be filled up with honey already. But of course, you don't just extract, you'll definitely make sure that they're fully loaded and overstocked before you extract any of that. Something that's actually really lovely about this is actually you can see the bees at work and I think that's probably one of the nicest things that this flow hive offers is you can actually watch and see the bees filling up the combs without any interruption um, and relatively safely. We'll just stick that 
cover back on. Lastly, this little ledge you can see at the bottom, which is slightly slanted down. You christening it? <laughs> that is the exit and entry for the bees. All in all, very happy. It looks nice and tidy. I'm actually gonna move it quickly uh, and just position it somewhere so it's slightly out of the way, maybe at the back of the room here. So whilst I do that, why don't we take a look at how it breaks down. The lid comes off. Secondly, the inner cover. Then we have the Flow Super, the Queen Excluder, our brood box, which has currently got no brood frames in it. And then finally, our base. Who would have thought I'd be owning a beehive? You like it then? It's a moony house. Do you know who would love to have a little nose around that? My granddad. Yeah, oh you've got to get Gramps around and have a look. He was a joiner, he was a carpenter for his the whole of his career. Yeah. That's what he did. And uh, he used to not do beehives, but he probably worked on a lot of this kind of stuff. He did a lot of lockers for yachts and stuff, he said. Oh, I think, it's so cute. I think he'd love to have a little poke around. So, yeah. Will you raise it up? Yeah, so what we'll do is me and Andy are going to put something on the ground and then raise it up off the ground. Yeah. Um, I just need to make sure that it's free from any insects and ants and stuff like that. Also nicely accessible. It can't be too too high. No. Just need to be able to grab in and out. So it won't go crazy higher than it already is. Mm. Uh, but I bought the feet as an extra. It's cool, huh? What do you think, Lummy? Yeah, she's already stroked it. What do you think? You like it? That's what she does. Good girl! You got the loony seal of approval. And don't be doing that when it's full of bees. No. You You'll come back with a swollen bottom. A very swollen bottom. <laughs> She'll only do it once. Much like the time that she walked across the hob. Yes, and did that once as oh, well. Little burnt tootsies. Yeah, I was very upset yeah. about that. Have you never done that before? Nope. It was the first time and the last time for everything. And yeah. uh, yeah, she'll only mess with the bees once. But yeah, I'm really happy actually. It looks really cool. We obviously need to uh, still decorate it and um, give it that weather seal. I also need to fit some frames, but yeah, in general, that's it. Do you want some picture frames? Yeah. With the little bumbles? We had to get some nice picture frames of me with my little beehive for the mm. private photo album. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, bed. Yeah, my goodness, you've been here for a long time, although it's, it's, not, like it's nine, only 9.30. Yeah, I know, it's not that late, is it? No. I started at like 5 and then we had dinner, so I reckon I've been working on it for about three hours. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be heading into MK to get my hair cut and also to visit the zip yard because I've got a few items that I need to have tailored for a campaign that's upcoming, which will be coming to the channel very soon as well. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you because the items, the quality and the feel is just insane. Uh, I'm very happy to get those tailored and see how they come out. Currently wearing a uh, teeth whitening strip. I stole one of Lydia's spotlight uh, strips from her drawer uh, because I felt like my teeth were looking Slightly more yellow than usual. I've been hammering the coffee. I haven't done a whitening strip in probably about half a year, um, if not longer. So I thought it's probably time I do a couple. So yeah, currently, let's see. Currently got them in. This morning I woke up and I had a very light workout. I did more like mobility and yoga style, uh, just to sort of like stretch my body out. I've been doing a lot of walking and running recently. So I did that. And then I did three sets of wide grip pull-ups and three sets of close grip pull-ups. And then I was like, I just need to get on with my day because I've got a busy day today. But that felt great. And then I headed to the bathroom and I've had a little shave. I used the Braun Series 3 and uh, just trimmed up the beard. I didn't do any uh, precision trimming. I didn't go around the lines or anything because I'm going to be going to my barber's. And uh, he quite enjoys getting the cut throat on me. So he'll be working that in when he does the sides. So yeah. Gonna head there now. It's a very wet and miserable day. It's actually quite nice though, waking up just to the sound of rain. Very peaceful. So, fragrance of the day. I've gone for La Homme Lacoste Intense. It's a very refreshing little sporty fragrance, so I'm gonna be wearing that to head out today.
So I'm back from the zip yard. I've had my fresh haircut ready for the rest of the week. I've just finished editing off this video as well and I've realized that it's a pretty long one. I'm getting much better at these long vlogs now. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, if you're not subscribed, please do click that subscribe button if you're watching my videos. It's very much appreciated. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the week and uh, enjoy the bank holiday weekend if you're in the UK and we'll be seeing you very soon. Take care, peace. Cause I don't